Hi, guys. Uh, just a quick note about the uh, podcast coming up, but also this is essentially the first of three podcasts, which is a, I'd say, mini series of people who have been helping me in three of the key areas. Um, as you all know, or you might not know, I'm not fully recovered. However, I do feel that working in these three areas are really making a lot of difference for me. And that is movement. So getting back to exercise, moving on a daily basis, focusing on my sleep, which is by no means the finished article, very far away from it. In fact, I'm fucking had a terrible couple of nights sleep and I'm not feeling great at the moment. So yeah, but it's definitely progressed. And then breath work and definitely not in that order. And, and each I've um, got Johnson, who's my my trainer and kind of helping me with exercise. Gary, who previously I kind of consulted with about my sleep um, and who knows a fuckload about sleep. Uh, and Satori, who I've been doing breath work session with and, and uh, like co-runs a breath work lab out here, uh, which which is amazing. What I want all of you to take from all from from these interviews is not, oh, I need to go and hire someone to go and do all of these things, or or um, you know, uh, you know, oh, okay, well, Phil's got something very different to to what I've got going on. You know, that might not work for me. I'd really just focus on the fact that these three things are very basic things. They're how we breathe, they're how we move, and how we sleep. If you're not addressing those three things before you do anything, before you go and take bee venom, before you go and plug yourselves with stem cells, shitloads of um, enemas and shitloads of enemas, probably shouldn't have said that, shitloads of supplements, all of that stuff. If you're not addressing those three things, how you breathe, how you sleep and how you uh, move, then surely... Those are the things that you should be looking at first. And so I would, uh, and 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 actually when I went to Breathwork the other night, he put it in, in this order. It's really interesting that he'd done that. And I realized, oh yeah, that's what I'm addressing. Breath, sleep, movement. Then he said nutrition. Because I think a lot of people could just be going gluten-free, dairy-free, all of these things. But then they sleep like shit, they don't move, and they don't know how to breathe. So... I just want you to take these three lessons from these next three um, podcasts. And for me, it just simplifies it so much more. You don't need to go, even before you do all the brain retraining and all that kind of stuff, this stuff will really, really help on a day-to-day -day basis, I believe, anyway. Um, take it or leave it. But anyway, I just want to put this before this podcast. I might put it before before each of the three podcasts and by the third po podcast hopefully you will have got the the message or you might just be really annoyed hearing me say the same thing again and want to fast forward but hopefully that all makes sense guys hope you really enjoy this uh this stuff and also the other thing as well is none of these guys are selling stuff to you they do sell a service don't feel like you're being sold to and if you do I'm sorry, but that's this is not what it's meant to. None of these things are ever me trying to get you to buy anything. I don't have an invested interest uh, or vested interest, whatever it is. Uh, so just another thing as well. Take the positives from it. Don't think that this is all about someone trying to fleece you for more money than you've already spent. Anyway, thanks, guys. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to another episode of the Chronic Comeback Podcast. Uh, today, I am speaking to Johnson Tan. Uh, this has been a highly requested and anticipated episode. Um, and we were actually meant to do my first ever in-person episode uh, but uh, because we're both in Bali, uh, but Bali's flooded right now. I'm actually at a co-working space and the whole car park. I think I'm going to have to swim out of here. And that is actually no joke. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. Um, so just before we get into the episode, I just want to give you a bit of an introduction to Johnson, but also just kind of how we started working together and how that's progressed. So Johnson's the, the co-founder and head coach of Nirvana Strength here in Bali. Um, when I first knew I was coming to Bali, one of the main things I knew I wanted to do after years of 
of inactivity and uh, chronic pain and just, yeah, really doing nothing other than walking. Uh, I knew I wanted to find someone and not just a general, not a physio, not just a normal PT that is going to have me doing press ups and hitting pads and stuff like that. I wanted someone who has experience of working with people who have um, has a, a, a general, like a basic or a good understanding of like chronic ish, issues, probably mainly like chronic pain, but someone who has a good understanding of that and and maybe the nervous system, something like that. Some someone who could help me take it really slowly, uh, but get me back to activity. Uh, I think in the problem I, in the past, I had problems just like trying to go all in and push myself, and then would just fuck myself up basically. So we started working together. I think just over a year ago, and I've gone from being in pain from just typing um to being back in the gym and 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 lifting heavy weights i i fully believe that this progression in my physical activity has been a form of brain retraining um in that i'm training my nervous system essentially to to trust my body again to trust its innate ability to heal and recover i'm by no means the finished article as johnson will will remind me uh but i i i i really think that whatever stage you're at in your chronic health journey making sure that there is some kind of progression in terms of exercise and movement is key and in in learning to trust your body and your nervous system again and which is why i was i was really keen to bring johnson on today so i will stop talking now sorry mate that was a that was a long lead in how, how i only saw you this morning but how are you doing I'm good, man. Very well. That is the great intro. Thank you so much. <laughs> cool. Um, well, look, we've had a hell of a lot of questions from people um, uh, on, on Instagram. And I think some of them are very, very specific to that particular person. Uh, some of them maybe aren't quite relevant. So I'm just going to I'm going to ask from a, a general point of view rather than ask very specific questions. Um, but could you just maybe just give to people listening, just like your understanding of maybe like a, not necessarily chronic illness, but when the issue someone might be dealing with when they're coming to you and they've got, let's say, chronic pain or maybe some kind of chronic fatigue and how that could impact their ability to recover and and do exercise in your in your experience and in your uh, with your knowledge. Yeah. Um, so I think most of the time, I, when you look at overall population, overall population, somewhere between 85 to 95 percent of the population are dealing with some kind of um, non-accidental injury, whether it's a lower back pain, a shoulder pain, a wrist pain, elbow pain, knee pain, ankle pain. And this can happen from like day day to day life, like just walking and you roll your ankle or you just miss a step and you twist your ankle, those kind of things, you know? So it's actually a very huge population that are dealing with injuries. And the biggest problem that uh, people's injuries tend to sustain or lack for quite a while, something that like maybe if you had twisted your ankle, you would think, oh yeah, in about a month or so, in a few weeks, you like be right on track and you, know, you get back in the gym or get back training or doing a sport. But our problem is um, from before, we never think of actually training so that you prehab, like prehabilitation training, so that you come out of the injury actually stronger and able to support the sport that you're doing. So I can share like my experience from uh, when I first found CrossFit in 2007. Like the first time I step into the gym, I think a lot of people who do CrossFit can probably resonate with this. Is you go in and you see these like people working out super hardcore, they're doing like kipping pull-ups or muscle ups. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool. I want to, I want to do that. You know, I want to be cool like them. So you start going to CrossFit, and then in time you get these little injuries that appear, right? And it's mainly because you go from like zero or little activity or have not done that exercise in such a long, a long time, or if ever. And then you just go rep up the rep and just like chasing after it. So then you get these injuries to build up uh, that you may not feel at the time. It might hit you in a couple of weeks, couple of months, or a couple of years down the line. Uh, and I see this very often. So a lot of the clients that I work with, a lot of them have actually, I don't know if the, the word chronic um, is right, but I would say they're dealing with long-term pain. 
anything from months to years and it's typical joints like shoulders, elbows, wrists, um, hip, back, knee, and ankle, mm -hmm. right? And it's like not understanding what caused it to begin with. Um, so for me, what I really do quite well is kind of trace that back. You kind of like, I, I look at their movement patterns, look at their history, and then figure out where it may have started. And then we have to start undoing it from that point on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Um, and I think so, we, we talked about it just before we started uh, recording. I think when people had seen the impression I, I, I'd made, they thought that I'd got this, like this, this, uh, I said the word before we started uh, recording, like this wizard, this guy who could, who knew all of the editing about chronic uh, fatigue and Lyme disease and everything. But then he was this, you know, this personal trainer and everything. And, and I, the, the first, that person doesn't really, really exist. Um, but yeah. what, but what I feel personally, my experience of this has been is that by, being able to put my trust in you and, and not relying on it's almost like I could I don't know how to describe this right I was able to put my trust in you and you were able to tell me what was safe and what wasn't and therefore mm. by you telling me that I therefore was able to like build confidence in my own system over time because I, I don't know if you remember mm. at the beginning I think there was we just had constant setbacks um yeah. and I think I, I got like really deflated um, and we, we weren't even really doing much compared to like mm -hmm. what we're doing now. Um, but what's been really interesting uh, in since kind of like May of this year is that in addition to like my pain and my injuries getting better, a lot of my other symptoms, so a lot of fatigue, um, a lot of uh, just a lot of other symptoms that I get on a day-to-day -day basis, which make me feel like shit, they've also improved as well. So I know you don't, as I said, you don't have like a, a background in like chronic fatigue or, or Lyme disease or anything like that. But do you think there is something there in terms of this is also you're training your nervous system to be out of fight or flight and using movement and an exercise to help you build that trust again? What Does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm not an I'm not a expert or a specialist in, in any way. Um, yeah. I I think um, I feel like there's quite a few things we we'll have to touch on this. Yeah. Um, so, uh, first off, I think it's important to find the right coach, the coach that is right for you. Um, and so I know that the, you did mention there were a lot of your audience who was. Uh, I'm asking maybe more specific um, issues for themselves or more chronic issues that they're dealing with. Um, find a coach that um, is right for you. So like why we work well together comes stems from like my, my history in the health and wellness industry and my passion for wanting to um, solve the puzzle or find the missing piece of the puzzle. So for me, um, my back, I'm actually a mechanical engineer by degree. So health and fitness was something that I, I was absolutely in love with. I knew I wanted to go down that route. Um, but because I have, uh, I'm Chinese and I come from Chinese family, and my parents are like, no, you're a doctor, lawyer, an engineer. So, you know, that's how I ended up uh, with the engineering degree. But I knew that I was going to be in health and fitness. Uh, and so a big part of my journey of uh, health and fitness is being through injuries and also observing people who go through injuries and why it takes so long to recover from those injuries compared to let's say professional athletes, right? Mm -hmm. And so how do we how do we replicate something like that for the general population? So mm -hmm. a simple example is uh, let's say a soccer player who has a meniscus tear, right? Or ACL tear. And they're told like, all right, you're gonna be out for six months post operation and then you you need to retrain another six months to recover. Right. So for the general population, that's usually the protocol. You do the surgery, it takes you six months to recover, and then six and a further six months to improve your performance to get back to kind of where you were before. But a soccer a professional athlete, they don't they don't have that uh, that option because it's their income, right? Like they have to make it work. And you'll see athletes who will go through maybe three months process, get back on the pitch performing at 80, 90, maybe almost hundred percent. So how 
for me, that was like the big, like, how can I replicate that for the general population? Mm. So a lot of the work that we do together, I'm deeply passionate about solving your issues and your problems. And it bugs me or irritates me hugely when I just don't understand what's happening. For example, we talk, we've talk we talked extensively about like hip and like how there are up days and there are down days, but they're there most often. Trust me, majority of the time, whenever we speak or you, I get a message from you, the first thing is, what's wrong with this bloody hip, man? Like how <laughs> we can't figure it out, you know? So, yeah. so, you know, like you're on my mind quite often. I'm like just, I've been, you know, like studying, looking, asking questions, trying to figure things out for you. So yeah. find the right coach who's deeply passionate. Someone who's deeply passionate about helping you solve your problems will more like more or less figure a way out to help you get there, you know? So that that's you know one of the big things to uh, in terms of looking for a coach that will work for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um and for someone who so there'll be people who are listening to this who um who who could be like bed bound for for example uh who mm-hmm. or or maybe um you know the stuff we first started doing when we first started working together it did not require a lot of like physical exertion at all yeah uh, but still there might be some people who who are, are unable to do that what would you suggest for so- someone who's like really just wanting to get started and do something so that they can see the progression. What would you suggest yeah. for that person to do? Yeah. So a lot of the times, um, progression is different for many people. When we talk about being in the gym, it's very easy to see. It's like if today I squat 50 kilos and tomorrow I squat 60 kilos, I've made progress. Right. So in that sense, when the weight increases, you you are making progress. Um, when we talk about someone who is starting brand new or um, even to give an understanding of like what I look for, um, whenever I take on a client or uh, work with a client, we, in terms of like health and wellness or movement, right? We always, we kind of like work in this hierarchy or in this order. Uh, I always look at the foundation is always your range of motion or your mobility. Right. So what range of motion do you have access to and how can we improve that range of motion? Once we have access to range of motion, we want to create stability. So can you display strength in the different positions of that range of motion? Mm -hmm. And then from stability, once you have increased range of motion, plus stability in your range of motion, then we build strength. Mm -hmm. And then once you build strength, you can shape up the performance. Performance can be the skills. So um, you you asked the other day about like can you get back to playing soccer or can you get back to running and things like that. Like we can't, but there's a performance aspect, and we need to make sure that you're stable in your positions and then build strength. Once you build strength, we build we work on some dynamic movements, and then from there we'll end up moving towards performance based stuff. So a lot of times, um, I mean, this is something that came to my head, but a lot of times when people think of like, hey, I want to start uh, losing weight, I want to start exercise exercising right the first thing is that are I'll start by jogging or running and they go out jogging or running a few months down the line they get like shin splints or knee issues or plantar fasciitis or like you know like your Achilles tendon flares up or something and it's because running or jogging is actually a skill there is a technique to running and jogging like as humans it's very easy for us it's like it's just walking but faster and faster and faster and you just keep going but there is actually a skill and a technique component to it that a lot of people do not think about approaching. Uh, and so this is kind of how the concept at Nirvana strength started. It's like a lot of times we look at something and go, yeah, just a pull up. I can just go hang there and just pull. And you know, eventually I'll get a pull up or not. But we look at it and say, there's a pull up, but there's a lot of components that come with the pull up. The stability and strength that comes from the shoulders, the strength in the biceps or the elbows or the, um, or the triceps and everything and your lats that actually leads you to pull up. So when we look at the pull-ups, you know, we thought of like progressions towards the pull-ups and we broke it down into like 40 over different components that we can actually work on to get to a pull-up. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the starting point for most people is movement. If like, if you're doing absolutely nothing, doing something is the best part. You know, like you, you just got to, you just got to get moving. Right. And like when we started, um, your, your range of movement or your mobility 
was a lot less. And mainly because you were feeling a lot of pains once you hit a certain range of movement. But how we approached your, your journey from the beginning was we didn't need a lot of weights, if any, right? Like if you look back at some of the training videos, it was really all body weight stuff. You're working out in a room or a hotel room. And it was like, I just need you to move to get your knee flexing, to get you back into the full range kind of thing. And it's something that we lose over time as we, I guess, as we age, if you don't use it enough. So a very simple uh, example would be like, if you watch a, a, a baby and like they're learning to stand up or they're walking, you can see like they walk, they squat, they'll, you know, their knees will collapse all the way to the ground, they sit in awkward positions. By right as humans, we have access to those range of movements, but we lose it because we don't practice it throughout our life. Right. As we get older, our range of movements get better because we went from like moving to walking and then sitting and then more sitting and then eventually lying down. Whereas I want to like, you know, what I have in mind is like by the time you hit 90 or 100 or whatever your end of your lifespan, it's like I still want you to have a full squat. You know, I still want you to pick up your grandkids or your great grandkids with a full squat, you know. So that's what I want for every client that I have. Yeah. Yeah. No, that uh, I think that's really, really good advice. Uh, I think what's really interesting about our progression uh, is, you know, it's how I say our progression. I, I, yeah. I, this is <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, uh, I didn't do a pull-up. I know actually, to be fair, I never could do a pull-up before because I never tried, but like as in physically and pain-wise, I don't think I attempted a pull-up until I was back in Bali, which is, God, that was like, what, nine months after, maybe 10 months after we started working together. And I think what's really interesting about the progression that, that's that been made is that for the first, oh, maybe even like four or five months if you'd asked me, like, honestly, have you made much progression? I'd probably said no. Uh, and yeah. I, was, I was quite frustrated and not frustrated with you at, at all. Just more that it just felt like the same old thing that I was doing again and, and that it wasn't going to work for me. And then some sort of critical mass must have just been, I don't know if that's the right term, but you know, where just momentum just started to get going and yeah. then things just started to click. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, the progression since then, whilst again, yeah, still there's still so much, so long to go, um, has just been crazy when I, when I compare it. Do you notice, out of interest, I've never asked this to you, do you notice a change in kind of my fear when it comes to exercise compared to at the beginning, um, like how fearful I was and how fearful I am now? Yeah, yeah, very clearly. Um, uh, I think, uh, I mean, we can always look back at our records <laughs> if you wanted to, but I, I know that uh, way back, especially when we first started, um, because of the, the fear that's built up in, in the mind, right? A lot, of, a lot of the times you question before you attempt. So yeah. if I say like, hey, I want you to go and do a bicep curl, you'd be like, I don't know if I should because... Yeah my elbows are hurting, you know, you're already like, my elbows are hurting. So I don't know if I should, I don't, you know, I don't think I should. Yeah. And now it's like, if I say, go do a bicep curl, all right, how heavy do I go? It's like as heavy as you can take it without pain. And you just go and like, oh yeah, I started to feel it about here, but you know, I, I got it, that kind of thing. Same, yeah. same with the pull-ups, right? Before when I say, hey, let's go do, you know, like go do a pull-up, your first thing would be like, I've, I've never done one. Like, I don't know if I should with my elbows. A lot of, a lot of times you're, responses is I don't know if I should like it's my elbows really so you have this big question mark around like am I ready to go and can I actually like, push past it and now it's like go do this and you're like all right I'll go and I'll see how it feels and if it's no good I just stop and if it's okay then it's a bonus you know yeah, yeah. so it's definitely it's definitely changed a lot and a lot of it is the mental mental side of it yeah and that's it's, it's really interesting because of what I've thought a lot of, of, about like recently is that I think I would quite when I tried exercise before I would maybe like really push through something and I would be like almost like a bit of stubbornness just like no well fuck this you know chronic I know I'm gonna be able to do it but there was still a lot of fear there and almost like I went into it knowing that I was probably gonna screw myself over whereas yeah. I think what we've like this almost like 
this train and this is why i like to i really do think of this as much if not more as brain training as physical training in the yeah. i'm learning when to take a step back and when to actually push and i think yeah. you there and, and messaging you say you know i think there's been times where i've just said no i'm going to go for it and you've gone no just take it easy to, you know take a break today because I, I think that's been key how does someone know when to push and when to take a take a step back what would be your advice in that respect yeah uh this is this is the it's a big one i think it's really important to know what your capabilities are uh, and also consider all the factors that that is going. So, for example, if you tell me now, like, hey, can I can I push a uh, one rep max back squat? My first question would be like, how do you feel? They're like, yeah, okay. Say, like, how do you sleep? I haven't been sleeping too all this few days. Uh, yeah, I don't think you need to push a one rep max back squat. I really do it when you're like fresh and like super good because the risk of injury can be a lot higher. And like, what is the end goal with this one rep max back squat? Is it something like to know whether you can do it or not? Or does it actually serve your purpose towards your goal of getting out of pain and going to play soccer per se? Because in my opinion, it, it it won't make a difference. You know, like, yeah, you can test it, but what does that do for the end goal? So um, in terms of like knowing when to push, it, it really depends. If, it, if it's going to get you towards your goal, then yes. So if you're talking about, let's say, a power lifter who's training for a competition, like he needs to test those numbers, he needs to know that he's com competition ready. Then yeah, like you, you know, you need to be very strict on like you must lift max effort today, like mm -hmm. today, today, whatever it is, figure it out, go and do it. Yeah. Um, whereas for general population or like for your case, you know, it's like what's the end goal? The end goal is longevity, move well, get out of pain. It's like we don't really need to push hard. And there's a lot of studies out now that actually it's already proven. Like you don't have to like go 100% effort in your sessions to make the best progress of best gains. You can work at sub maximal efforts and make the best results uh, or the best gains without ever wiping yourself out. And that already reduces the risk of injury hugely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's that's it's really interesting because I, I do feel like. Uh, patience has been like a big thing that you've been like teaching me yeah uh, <laughs> I, I, you're you're always just like I, I think I I used to when I was in the gym um uh, so I went to the gym uh, for best part of maybe eight years and I would go through if if it was like you know getting ready for a big holiday or something like that I'd be like probably going to the gym maybe five six times a week and I'd be doing biceps triceps chest no legs any of that stuff yeah. uh i'd be running a hell of a lot and then i'd get back from one of these holidays and i'd probably go back to being in the gym maybe like you know twice a week and none of that and and all of that is kind of if you look at how one it's just so lopsided that like, no wonder like i created loads of issues with myself and it, there's no consistency there at all and what I yeah. love about, I was speaking to my brother actually recently. He was like, oh, I'm going to be really getting on like a fitness thing now. Yeah. And he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, actually, I think this is just my life now. This is what I want to do. I just want to train four strength train at four days of strength training a week and two days of whatever Johnson tells me to do uh, in, in, in addition to that. And previously I would have thought, oh, four days, if you're trying to get in really good shape, four days in the gym, you know, that's, that's not enough. That's not enough. You need to be doing more and more and more. But actually, you've always kind of like said to me, less is more like quite a lot as long as you're doing it consistently. Would would you say? I've just said quite a lot there, but would you say that that that's that's right? That's something you profess a lot. Like, don't push too much, but just be consistent. Yeah, absolutely. Consistency is like the main thing. Um, you know. Uh, yeah. I think the misconception is that when we want to get better, we think I need to do more so that I can be better at what I'm doing. But you have to, I think maybe people don't consider that like exercise is also is a form of stress. So a lot of people would think like, oh, I go, I go and exercise to relieve stress. Maybe, maybe it's because you're having a shift in your environment from in the mental space. You're like, I'm not in the office, I'm not like bogged down by work or you know, people hounding at me and you've got a different space where you can like push hard. 
and they like relieve stress, but exercise is a form of stress. And to the body, stress is stress. You know, like imagine, imagine you have a cup and like you have your work stress, so it goes up by a quarter, and then you've got your family stress and your relationship stress and the financial stress. And then you top it off by doing physical exercise. So you add more stress, but oh, I'm gonna push super hard and then you overflow, you know? So it's all about stress management. Uh, and that will serve the best results. So for example, an entrepreneur or it's, uh, you know, a CEO or like yourself, you know, um, you've got your business stress, you've got your financial stress, you've got your life stresses and, you know, relationship stresses. We don't need to add on more, you know, and for someone who's not, who's not making income out of, uh, your fitness and you're looking for longevity, you don't have to be in the gym six, seven days a week. I'd rather you cut back and to like four or five days a week, but have more time to dedicate to your family, your life or your work or whatever it is that's going to help improve the quality of your life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, then your stress will start dropping down. Then the results will start taking in. Yeah. yeah. So more is not always better and less is not always better. It really does depend on the individual and where you're at. Um, but as you age, so something that I came to learn myself is uh, once you, for a guy, once you hit about 30 or so, um, you, you start to drop the training down a little bit more. Like in my, in my teens and in my 20s, like you can quit super hard and recover really quickly. Once you hit 30s, it does change a little. And once you hit 40s, it will change a little. When you hit 50s, it does change a little. My goal is to make sure that the changes is not a massive gap. You don't go like training super hard, like seven days a week. And then you come down to like, I can only train like three or four days a week. And it's like, I've only got two days a week. And then, you know, as you age, you have more times like, okay, I'm going to train six days a week. You know, it should be gradual changes and not by much. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do, do you think uh, there's, it's like, uh, by being so kind of like up and down with like trying to push one minute and then doing nothing the next minute, you're, it's almost like with, cause I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot of research and stuff into sleep at the moment and you're yeah. trying to do stuff at the same time every day. You're yeah. training your body to know what to expect. And mm -hmm. you say it's the same with exercise that if you like your body knows to do that, that you're going to do four sets of, whatever you're doing each week, whether it's strength training or whatever, then your yeah. body will learn to recover better and it will know yeah. what to do as it adapts. Yeah, yeah. So a very simple way to put it is, like, for example, the case you're talking about, right? Like, before you go on a holiday or something, you kind of, like, five, six weeks before, you kind of, like, go hard at the gym, right? Yeah. Versus someone who's consistent every day. day in. You go hard at the gym five, six days a week, and let's say you achieve the result that you want. Then, like I said, post holiday, you're going back to like twice, twice a day, uh, twice a week, right? And so the consistency is no longer there. So it's actually not a sustainable aspect for you. Like um, for for us as humans, we're generally very resilient, but you know we have a, a capacity for resiliency. Whereas, like let's say you're resilient for five to six weeks, and then after that, things kind of start to slow down because the body starts breaking down from all that hard work, right? And so by grouping all the hard work in one end, you can see good results, but the question is, is it sustainable for your lifespan, right? Versus someone who's consistent at the gym, let's say four days a week or five days a week, and even if they miss a day here and there, an odd day here and there, they're still consistent hitting four or five days a week. You hit your workouts all in five or six weeks. If you get hurt, your risk of injury is a lot higher, but if you get hurt, you get, you know, you get thrown back by a few months and then you recover from that. And then you go again and the five or six weekend, you can see how like you're doing well, then you got a long lull and then you do well again, you got a long lull. You're not actually making progress. You're just staying within the same cycle, right? And versus someone who's consistent, but consistent and making improvements over yeah. time. Yeah. So you do want, you know, like consistency is a huge part of it. You know, it, it's habit forming, it's adaptation for the body. Um, a lot of times people change their programs or their coaches too quickly because they don't see results within three months or six months. 
um, for me, I would say like you give the program a goal for a year or three years and then tell me, like even a year can be considered quite short depending on the program, but give it a goal for good, like year, three years, five years, and then tell me that it doesn't show you result. A, a program generally, if you are consistent with it, you will see good results with it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not about the program. It's about the participant actually being consistent with it and being able to accept that it may not be as fancy pool or varied as they would like it to be, but the consistency is huge. Mm. I think I think what's really been really interesting for me, like comparing me in the gym now to before, I'm so much more grateful now that I get to work out uh because it was taken away from me for so long that i actually i was saying to my girlfriend uh the the night before um the gym i was like is it like a bit sad like how excited i am to go to the gym tomorrow like even though it's like you know the stuff you have me doing is like tough it's not uh it's not easy work it's just like mm-hmm. i don't know i get that you know mm-hmm. a lot of gratitude and uh, i don't see it as uh like a chore to be done as much any anymore um yeah, yeah that was just a, a side note um a question a question i had around like someone's asked a question around um they've actually said when how do you know when you're ready for more activity but actually i'm gonna say that as a, like how do you know do you feel because w- with me it was almost like before i get back to activity or to to do something, um, I I need to feel a certain way. I need to not have any pain at all. Um, and I think what I've got really good at is being okay with still having pain there and still having the symptoms I have, and yet still doing my exercises. Um, again, I think it's coming back to like when to push and, and when not to push. But do you think that it's important to have almost like a healthy uh, a healthy attitude towards pain and stuff like that and to be able to be with it because it feels to me like it's almost impossible just to have that completely eradicated and you need to to be able to start you need to be okay that that stuff's gonna be there whilst you're going through yeah. it yeah 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 um i think it's very similar to what we spoke about for uh just before as well right it's like it's not about trying to perfect it it's about doing it and then perfecting it with time as well. The same like, you know, when when you launch a product or when you had started this podcast, you know, if you try to perfect your your introduction, your lighting, and you know, you know, capturing the audience and blah, 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 you may not have ever started your podcast or you might still be in the works of trying to start the podcast. Whereas like, you just got to start and you just got to do it. And the more you do it, it gets better. I'm quite sure from when you first began with the podcast till now, like you've gotten better with, making the introductions with the questions and the selection of questions and keeping the audience engaged, right? So it's something that you build with time. So it's a relationship with, let's say, pain or relationship with your with um, your your health or your wellness, right? So someone who's dealing with pain, like how do I know when do I push more or how do I know when it's time to introduce more? Um, that's really on you to know, you know? And it's something like you, it's a mindset thing. I feel you have, it's a relationship and understanding. Like you acknowledge that, yes, I've got pain. Okay, I'm going to go and play basketball this weekend, but I'm concerned my knee might hurt. But you know what? Like I'll go. And then if my knee starts playing up, I'll stop. Mm-hmm. Right. But a lot of times we go and then we're like, oh, it's starting to hurt. But like, all right, I'll, I'll go, I'll go like another, another round. Or I'll go, you know, another game. And then we'll, we'll see how it goes. Maybe it's just a little. So it's, it's, Having a discipline and also the relationship that I'll go or explore it. Oh, it's it's kind of like not great. I'll stop here. And then, you know, don't beat yourself out about it. Think of it as more of like an explorative journey of like, okay, so I wasn't ready for that. Head back into the gym. You know, these are what we're working on. This is what we're training. Uh, these are stuff that help me improve and get out of pain. So you work on that and you, you know, you, you enjoy the process of like, Oh, since I've had this flare up again, or since it's it's come back again, I've introduced some breath work. I've started eating a certain way, and like it went away in in less than a week. Oh, and then the next time it happens again, oh, it went away in three days. And the next time it happened again, oh, it went away in a day. And next time it happened again, 
oh, I didn't feel it the next day anymore. Mm. So it's these little, I, I guess, small differences that that we kind of take note of. And that's the progress that we're looking for, right? Versus like, oh, there's pain. And then you're like, there should not be pain when I go and play my sport or do something else. Because yeah. it's not it's not like it just disappears. It is something that it'll take time to go away. But the, the part of the journey that um, we should be noting is how the recovery time between flare up, um, how quality of life has improved, like your sleep, relationship, um, you know, physically how you feel, uh, even the way that you look, how, how those are improving. Uh, and, even, you know, like even like you make huge improvements and you, you might find like, oh, yeah, it's, it still pops up once in a while, but not as often or you recover a lot faster than before. And so for me, like those are the little wins that's going to lead us to the big win, which is get out of pain completely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's good. You, you kind of like touched upon it then. You said flare-ups. And I think anyone listening to this, uh, regardless of what they've got going on, will have had so many setbacks, uh, particularly when trying to exercise. And I think the difference uh, between since we've started working together and, and before is that I whenever I had a setback, I always remember when I, I, I started, I, I think I took, I, I found like a program online that I was going to follow and go really, really slowly. And I think on the third time of trying, I just had the worst setback the next day, like felt horrific and, you know, loads of pain, loads of fatigue it was just terrible. And just my, my attitude then was always, okay, well, I just stop. I need to rest. I need to stop and completely step away. And what was it been interesting about working with you? I remember having probably one of my worst setbacks with you. I mean, you wouldn't remember it, but I remember coming in and I remember thinking, surely you'll just tell me to rest today. Like I won't, I, I, I shouldn't be doing anything. But you were just like, okay, that that's fine. We'll change what you're doing today, but we'll still work. We'll still do exercise. And I thought that's a really interesting, like change of mindset that you don't just stop. You just take stock of what's going on and you readjust and you keep moving forward. What, what's your what's your view on that? Yeah, I, I think uh, it, when, when you mentioned that, I one of my pet peeves. I think a lot of uh, a lot of the professionals that I, I work with, or the coaches that I work with now, um, or had the pleasure of working with, a big pet peeve of ours is when someone's got, let's say, hip pain, a back pain, or a knee pain, they go see a doctor, and the doctor says, like, "Oh, you need to stop exercising." Yeah. It's gonna get worse. And yeah. I'm like, what about training some biceps, man? Like, you don't, you don't need your knee for that. Like, let's go do that. Let's go train your neck. Like, let's go, you know, like, let's go learn something cool. Like, learn how to wiggle your ears. You train something, you know. And so, movement is the is the big part of it. Uh, movement really does uh, encourages a lot of blood flow in the body, which then helps work with uh, improving your your mobility. And I think it's a big part of the mindset. The moment that you stop, you're just like, I'm not supposed to do this or I'm not supposed to exercise anymore. You've created this huge mental block wall that, you know, we've got to kind of be through. It's like one of those things that you either let me in or you don't. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, for me, it's like, okay, yeah, you're having a flare up. It, it happens and it is expected because right now, for example, where you are in your program, we do expect that there'll be days where I'm going to push you. There'll be days where I want to test and see how it goes. And it's the same. It's like when you, when you go out and play soccer, you're going out, you're going to go have fun. Um, but you also want to, you also want to do well. You're not going to go there and like, Oh, just kick the ball. I just pass it around. I'm like, I, I don't want to score a goal. I'm just here to pass the ball. Like you're not that guy, right? Like everyone's going to go out and say, like, I want, I want to you know, kick the ball and put it in the net. Like I'm going to, I'm going to sprint. I'm going to run. I'm going to jump. I'm going to like go after it. So it's it's kind of like you're just gonna test yourself, but but then we need to know like okay, what do we get out of this test? And then if a flare up occurs, it's like, well, okay, if your knees are hurting, your hips are hurting, like let's go do something else. Like let's go and train upper body. Let's go do pull ups. Let's go do bench. Let's shift the focus for now. The end goal is still longevity. The end goal is to get you out of pain, but it doesn't mean that your training journey has to stop. Mm. You know, like we can still do a lot of stuff. And then for me, movement is a great way to get you back to where we want you to go, right? So when you're having a flare up, I'll never tell you to like, right, no more movement, lower body. Maybe we take two or three days where you rest and just let it chill. 
depends whether it's a joint issue or a muscular issue. Uh, you know, I would recommend get a massage or go see someone for a certain thing. Um, but eventually I'd be like, all right, Phil, like, I know it's still flaring up, but like, we start, we start back at basics, you know, reverse sled walks, just start there, like just hit 10 minutes today, but let's go like crush some upper body after that. Mm -hmm. And then you do your reverse sled walks, a couple of days later, you do it again, a couple of days later, you do it again. And then next thing you know, you're doing it every day. Mm -hmm. And then after every day, then we start introducing, let's say, box squats. You're not squatting as deep, or we're introducing some kind of lunge pattern or something. And that's kind of where we started, right? We started with unilateral movements. We started with backwards walking. We didn't even put any weight into your, into your backwards walking. I just said walk backwards, right? And then we started with like you doing unilateral work where you're, you're standing and you're just bending one knee at a time, right? You're doing this step downs and things. But from a flat surface, remember? Right? That was so, it was so, bo it was so boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's boring, but you know, it's, the, it's the foundation no, no. that leads you to greater movement, right? No, no, and no, no. no. And, and, and look, that's why I need, like, I yeah, I had to do those things and I had to uh, I wished I wish now I'd taken more videos of those times so I could share it with people because I only had those just yeah. more numbers mm -hmm. of videos in, in the beginning. But yeah, you had me walking backwards. I was doing things that mentally I'm like, how how is this how is this helping? But I think the important thing was is that uh, and it's one of the chronic illness uh, programs. It's called Primal Trash. She talks about um, even if you are bed bound, just doing something like this every day, right? Yeah. And you associate your with doing exercise, and you're like, I'm someone who exercised. That you're building that identity, and I think mm -hmm. what was interesting about us working together is that I was going to the gym four times a week. Yes, I was maybe walking backwards in a line, but I was someone who went to the gym again. I was someone who exercised, and I kind yeah. of I'd lost that identity, and that created a lot of separation between me and my old life and people yeah. that I, I i knew and now i was i was i was back you know not necessarily back but i was you know i, I was felt more involved and that and that um yeah getting that identity again i just felt like was really important um so yeah 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 absolutely i hear you man yeah and yeah it, it's essentially it's like it, it doesn't matter where you everyone has a starting point that's the main thing you know, everyone's got a starting point it's different for everybody but the main thing is that you start and then you be consistent with with it. You know, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. You you know, I could give you the most fancy, complex, elaborate program, but if you do it that one time and you get smacked, and then you do it, you know, one one more time again the following month, like you're not gonna see that much difference from it, right? But the the best programs are those that are basic that will get you moving consistently and then build up your capacity from that. So like when we started, you know, your range of movement was lacking because you're doing a lot of, you're dealing with a lot of pain, right? But from then till now, like you're able to fully squat, you, you know, like if we probably, we could probably get you like jogging, maybe not sprinting because it may still hurt you a little bit, but we could probably get you to some, some form of capacity of movement. I could probably get you sprinting on a bike if we needed to. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a, it's about building the capacity and it's that consistency every day, day in and out that actually helps you build it. Yeah, definitely. And um, what would you say? Um, do you have much in because a lot of people listen to this because uh, we talked a lot about pain? Do you have you ever dealt with someone who uh who deals with a lot of like fatigue uh at all? And like if someone came to you who had like chronic fatigue and maybe if they did too much exercise. They would have a bit of a flare. I I see it very similar to pain myself. Would would you would you treat that in the same way? Like how would you approach that? Uh, it's different. Yeah, like I could have two people who are dealing with chronic fatigue, but uh, what you know, a big part of it is figuring out what uh, getting to the root cause of it. Whether it's either too much exercise, uh, sleep disruptions, maybe it's a nutritional thing, maybe it's a it's a breath issue, right? Um, so it, it really does depend on the individual. Um, I have worked with someone who had chronic fatigue in a way that like they couldn't handle 
exercise for too long. So let's say for an hour PT session that we would do, like an hour session that we do, they would work out for like five minutes and then they'd be like flat out on the floor because they're dizzy. And then they'll get up again and then work out five minutes and then flat out on the floor because they got dizzy. And so like the whole hour, we may have probably done something like 15 minutes or 20 minutes of work. But over time, you've built the capacity for it. Again, it's, it's all about building capacity and being consistent with it. Over time, by the time we we finished our work together, she could work out for two hours straight without stopping. Wow. Yeah. And so it it's it's really like everyone's got a starting point. As long as you start, um, have an understanding of the relationship of like, okay, look, I'm getting tired, like, oh, this is getting dangerous, so I'm getting dizzy, like stop, give yourself time. Okay, let's pick up, let's do one more step, you know. And maybe you, you start with like having to stop for five minutes and then, you know, you, you start timing these things. Like, can you repeat the step instead of a five minute rest, we do a four minute, 45 seconds rest. Yeah. A four minute, 30 seconds rest. And then work on reducing that time to like two minutes yeah. or one minute. Yeah. And then, and then now we change the volume instead of doing the 10 reps. Now I'm going to go to 15 reps. And it's like, oh man, I got wiped out on the 15 reps. And then you start again at five minutes and then work your way down again. But mm -hmm. it's about building capacity. Again, it's not something that would just click. It's something that you do consistently over time. And like you said, you'll, you'll just have this moment where you realize like, I feel good. Like I'm going to push it today. And then the next thing you know, it's like, I've worked out for 30 minutes without stopping. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's something that you build up with consistency. And, and, and that's what I mean about uh, for a long time, like I really, really believed that there was something different about me that, me that meant that my body couldn't heal and it couldn't get better. And there was something chronic, you know, just bad about me. And what I've used exercise as is that I'm like, oh, wow, I, I couldn't I couldn't do that two months ago and now I can and I think it's that constant like evaluation of like I, I I'm better than I was which proves that I can improve which proves mm -hmm. I can get better and I haven't actually told you this I, I went uh and did uh you know the wake park here the wakeboard yeah thing? I went and yeah, did that yeah. I went and did that at the weekend uh nice. I, I probably should have checked with you first <laughs> um, <laughs> but but honestly even six months ago, I would have just, I would have just flat out said, no, I can't, I can't do that. But definitely yeah. like a year ago, if I tried to do that, I would have been, I'd have been in bits for like a long time. It would have caused me a yeah. lot of problems. And the day after I had, a, I was sore a bit you know, here and there, but I was, I was, I was all right. And yeah. I just thought that was actually, it was actually uh, quite a big afterwards. I kind of really felt like that was quite a big moment for me because I don't feel like I could, it's almost like now I feel like maybe one day I could snowboard or ski or something, something I, I thought I could never, ever do. Um, so yeah, well, just to share that with you, you didn't know that, I, that I'd done that. Would you have said that was okay if I'd have, if I'd have asked? Yeah, if you had asked, I would say, go for it, go have fun. Um, yeah, just enjoy, enjoy your weekend. And then we see what happens on Monday. But it, again, I wouldn't have expected anything much would have happened you might feel a bit sore maybe you might have a flare-up maybe but if if that was the case we would just deal with it at that time yeah right because like even with the flare-ups that you've had uh you know on recent times like it goes away pretty quickly like you get back on track pretty quickly so it's not not for me it wasn't that big of a concern if you start trying little things and explore your movements and things like that yeah, because I almost think like because I had a quite a big flare up and I, I did speak to you about it. It was, it, it was like in my knee. It, I had a big flare up in my knee, but then also it, it, everywhere was bad. Um, but what was really interesting was because because we've I'd had so many flare ups before and they got better. I just had that confidence that it was gonna that it was gonna be okay. And actually yeah. just like knowing that I need the flare ups to get better. It's almost it's just yeah. like progress isn't linear, right? It has to go no. like like that. And yeah, it, flare ups are like part of like they have to be part of it almost. Would you would you say? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So just like you said, like, you know, like you're 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 looking at like a linear progression. So you're yeah, you're looking for constant improvement. Um, but day to day, it should be like, feel great, feel great, feel great. Oh, not so good. 
feel good, feel good, feel good. A bit of a flare up, you know, puts me down a little bit. Feel good, feel good. But you can the trend is still taking me. Yeah. I would say angle of you know, great. So yeah. that's that's what we're looking for, right? Like so it is it is expected. Like, you know, anyone who's dealing with chronic fatigue or pain or something, it's like I'm not like again, it's not like you work with me today, it's gone. It's not like that. It's going to be, you work with me today, I will promise you that you will have flare-ups. <laughs> I yeah. promise you, you have days that won't be great. I promise you that there'll be days where you may get frustrated. But I will also promise you that we are still making progress towards the end goal. Yeah. So yeah, your your frustration with your flare-ups now, for example, is a lot, it's a lot, um, it's a lot less frustrating than it was before, right? Because before it's like, when you had a flare-up, it's like, Oh shit! You know, like it, it's come back again, and like, how long is this gonna take? Like, is the program working? Is are we actually on the right track? Like, I've done all this work, but nothing like to change. Like, it's still here. But now it comes, you know, it comes up, and you go like, oh, it's here again. Yeah, maybe it's like a two week thing, or a one week thing, or a three day thing, and then it goes away, and then you're you're back on track. You know. Yeah, I was I was a lot more moany back then. I uh, I I'd think I'd moan quite a lot, uh, thinking it wasn't going to work. Um, I I actually also think the, the different in uh, mentality as well is that when you have a setback, um, my my thing was almost like oh, I've undone all of the good work that's happened yeah. because I feel like yeah. shit. And also, yeah. what, that, what that means is that um, uh, that I I can't. What, what what was I thinking then? My, my brain's gone. But yeah, it's un, undone all of the good work that that I've done up until this point. And yeah. I, I think unless you're like breaking something like a bone or tearing completely tearing a tendon or anything like that, it's always just like a minor setback that then yeah. get back on track. Um, yeah, and that's a good, really good change of mentality that that, that I've managed to build through working with you. Yeah, yeah, you know that saying like you take one step forward, you go two steps back. Yeah, right. So yeah. like, the difference with that is like every day you're taking a step forward. Something goes wrong today. Let's say you take five steps back, but yeah. you've been stepping forward for the last like fifty days. So you've actually taken fifty steps forward, but five steps back. Like it's not that bad. Like you're building that foundation and still working towards it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and but I, I think what happens is with so with chronic illnesses is that when one of those things happen, you then go and spiral, and you do take all those steps back, and you go yeah. e- either back to square one as what well. you mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people that I've had on this show that they they will have made a lot of progression, they'll have almost got to the point where they feel like they recovered, and then they'll have a flare up, and then they'll get even worse than they were before, and I think it is because of the mental torture that that puts you through that you think you know it was it was almost like that was what I was going to say it's almost like was was I dreaming did I kid myself that I like actually did make all that progression um so yeah I think it's really really important to see it as just a a few steps backwards and that you've already made all that progression um Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it's really. I'm, I'm conscious that. Uh, yeah, we're 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 pretty much at the time that we're. Uh, yeah, that we're we're out. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Um, look, thank you so much for for, for coming on. Uh, obviously, I uh, we speak all the time, so uh, I probably I probably message you more than I do my girlfriend, which is a. Uh, <laughs> maybe that says maybe that says uh, she'll she'll be watching this now, so she'll pretty. She'll be <laughs> for that. Um. So, uh, just a quick one with regards to someone who's listening to this right now, um, and I, I want anyone who's listening to this right now, whatever you've got going on, you need to take the the, like, the core messages that have come through this, and I think for me it just sounds like, you know, one of the things you said was just to get started and to do something, get started to have a long-term vision and, and stay consistent and yeah. just stick with it. Would you say those are like the main, that's the yeah. main thing to say? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the main thing is get started. Like you, you, you're not going to make an improvement if you don't start. That's the main thing. And yeah. then consistency, it doesn't have to be complicated consistency is the big thing uh and then understand what your goals are you know um i i have a lot of micro goals like you know i want to get lean i want to get shredded i want to you know lift a certain weight i want to do this and that and maybe do a competition or sport blah, blah, blah. but the end goal for me is i want to live till i'm 100 
walk up a mountain with my grandkids or great grandkids. And if I die doing that, I, I'm more than happy, you know? And so that's the angle. So that's for cool. me, it's like, but yeah, you know, I, I want to, I have these goals where I want to get, let's say I want to get lean and shredded, but I go, I go back home for Chinese year or Christmas or New Year. And like, I know I'm going to be eating. It's taking me away from the goal. Like how strictly do I want to, you know, to stick to it and achieve that goal or like, you know what, I'm only back once a year, I'm going to just eat and then I'm going to get back on the train for the next 11 months. Mm. So it, it it's a relationship with yourself and your goal at the end of the day. Mm. Like uh, I, for me, it's just, I want to live long, be healthy, keep injuries at the minimum um, and just move and have fun. You know, like a lot of times we train in the gym, but we have to be training for something. So I do encourage everyone to, as much as we're at the gym training, go out, go and explore, go and use your fitness that you've also had to achieve or attain and go and find something to do, you know, new sport, find a new hobby or whatever it may be. Yeah, cool. Um, look, yeah, thank you so right. much for coming on and joining, mate. Uh, and um, what I'll do is I'll include your contact details if people want to reach out and uh, contact you and ask any questions, if that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much, dude. Right. Thank you. Appreciate cool. it. All right, take care.